Brent Vegan feels after this scrimmage is done. It is the Sunny Holland Classic. We are in Bozeman, Montana, Bobcat Stadium. Pretty good crowd on hand. Of course, the weather will bring out good things in people, and we are going to see the blue and the white for Montana State. And, Mike, right away we're going to see that depth because Blake Glesner gone, the kicker from last year. He went off to UCLA, and now it's a new kicker. Same number, though. Yeah, it took over uh, somewhat seamlessly. We'll see here uh, as he kicks thing off, and we'll get this thing going with a little short kick. Going to roll down to about the one. I think they're probably going to blow these dead on yeah. the uh, in the kicking game today, but we'll see. I know a year ago it went down to the wire, and they got a little bit more serious about some of those special <laughs> teams going late. So we'll see Jordan Reed, Jordan Reed in a quarterback for the white start team. for the white team at uh, quarterback. And, you know, one thing Montana State, Mike, really doesn't have to worry about is the quarterback position. They're going to find out a lot about a couple of guys, but Tommy Malott we'll see a little bit later on. Sean Chambers during the season, he's out for the scrimmage, still nursing, uh, recovering from a surgery he had, but uh, a minor surgery. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, um, this is the first time we got to, you know, uh, Reed was hurt early in the fall last year, but boy, he uh, definitely passes the eye test, six six two twelve, yeah. and we'll get a look at him now. And he'll fake the handoff to Jared White, pass off to the right, and that'll be the blue side home bench, the Bobcat normal bench, and the catch complete there to Noah Smith, a wide receiver, for redshirt freshman out of Joshua, Texas, and well, that's what you'd expect out of Montana State is moving the ball. Yeah, and uh, again, we're getting a look at a, a, a new receiver, not new, uh, was in the program, but uh, uh, as DJ mentioned earlier, a, an area where there was a lot of turnover, and we will see some new faces. Yeah, we definitely will as White from the gun. Three-step drop, and they're going to whistle that. That would have been a sack. There was no doubt about that. Is I think that was... Max Murphy. Uh, intended for Max Murphy, but there was a there was a uh, defensive uh, lineman think, coming yeah, in there quick. Yeah, uh, Fredrickson was there, came from that right defensive end spot, and clearly had that yellow jersey been white, uh, we'd have had a heck of a collision there. <laughs> so move it back. It'll be second and long here for the white team. We'll see what uh, kind of call is made here on second down. High snap, pulled down, and a good run right up the middle. That'll be, I think that was Elijah Elliott. Yeah, and a good time. They had the blitzing linebacker from the outside. That was Eli Aby, who came down from the right and was able to make that stop. Going to be third and about 15 now. That was actually Jared White. We got two 12s out there. One to quarterback. It's, it's scrimmage. Yeah. It's spring. <laughs> Sometimes this doesn't even. <laughs> the numbers will be challenging today. I ran into it. Uh, Tommy Nelson before the game, he's listed. Uh, he's wearing 61 for the white. Um, listed at 60 on one seat, another on 61. So bear with us, folks. <laughs> That'll be white taking the, uh, the uh, snap, rolling out to his left, and that pass hauled in. And a very nice catch made by, well, that's not Brody Greeby. That's we're gonna. We mentioned the number situation right away, and we're gonna get into it early. Is that is we've got two, two tens, and that is not either one of them. I can guarantee you, that's not Sean Chambers, and that is not. Uh, excuse me, that is not uh, Brody Greeby, as it you is mentioned. Not. <laughs> but whoever it, it was did a great job of sitting down in that open spot between the safety and the backers. Enough for a first down. And that'll be another sack pulled in for the blue team. So you can see that defense, Mike. It, it, you know, the offensive line returns a lot. You got some guys out nursing, nagging injuries through the spring. But, you know, that defensive line doing a, a great job so far. Yeah, that time it was Zach Cruz, 91, coming in from the left end and getting a little touch sack on Jordan Reed. Going to bring up another long yardage situation for them. So Reed, a redshirt freshman. Out of El Centro, California. He's got Elliott behind him. He'll turn and hand it off to Elliott, left side. Got through a, a pretty good hole to start, and then he's going to be pulled down after about three yards on that carry. Front down by number six, Miles Jackson. 
Yeah, nice defensive play that time. It looked, as you said, that they, they had a little crease here at the beginning, and then that Bobcat defense does a great job of rallying and keeping them again. They're going to be looking at third and, and more than 10 here. have been able to pick up one of those earlier on the pass to our missed receiver on the outside. <laughs> so Reed. Yeah, you definitely, you brought it up, Mike. He looks the part, got a good arm with his first couple of passes today. Yeah, really has stood in the pocket. We saw him roll to make that pass earlier. This time he's going to give it off up the middle, and it's not going to be Here enough to even run. get back to the, the original line down. of scrimmage. Jake Vegan. Jake Vegan with the stop and a fourth down situation. And in spring scrimmage, Mike, you went through this. It's it's to see what you have. Of course, the Bobcats, and we'll talk a lot about this, replacing special teams. This is a go situation, though, from the 42 of the blue. Yeah, we'll see what the Cats do defensively to adjust this. going to be trips to the right for them. Bobcats are going to walk people up, roll the single safety to the uh, trip side. Ball on the near left hash mark, and Reed, good drop. Goes to his outlet underneath, and that is Elliott. He'll be shy of the first down. Good close there by the defensive back. And I think that was Aiden Parks coming in from yeah, the Yeah, Aiden Parks spot. did a good drive. The quarterback took what he had available to him. Reed checked it down, and, you know, that's one of those things where, from the offensive standpoint, you need to make one guy miss to pick up the first down, but a great play by Parks driving up, and it's gonna, we're going to get a look at the uh, Tommy Malott and the blue offense now. And Malott runs out there. He'll be flanked oh, yeah. with Elijah Elliott. So we have different numbers, which is good. <laughs> We're from, we'll be a little bit more familiar with uh, some of these coming out that are around Tommy Elliott. I think they called the delay a game, but Coach Vegan out there right in the middle said, yeah, that one's on me, so restart the clock. No penalty. <laughs> yeah. we, when you're the head coach, we, you can get away yeah, with that. It would be nice to have that ability uh, on Saturdays come this fall. <laughs> exactly. I'll hand that off to you, Elliot. And good push from the front line of yeah, the defense. Just, that offense came with a little uh, outside zone to the right side of formation, but Blake Schmidt is coming there from his nose guard position. Watch him. He just comes right across, and he fights through the block on the outside and does a great job. That's a guy who, who had a good year for Montana State, but is going to be one that they look for to go to that next level and be one of the leaders in the inside of that defensive front. Second down and 11 for the blue team. A lot wearing the gold with the blue four. It means don't touch him. Now he'll fake the handoff to Elliott. He'll pass off to Elliott, rolling out the left side. Elliott's got to block up the front. And one of the wide receivers out there getting a few extra yards for Elliott. And it'll be just shy of another first down. He's brought down to by number six. Good job offensively that time. A couple of really solid blocks on the outside of the formation. Third down and three to go. Tavian Williams with a nice block from his Z receiver position. So third and about three for the blue. A lot. He'll clap the hands and reset the offense. Looking at uh, just trying to see the, the defense was in a too high safety look. I get trips to the right side of the offensive formation. Looks like they're going to stay in that. He's going to check down to the run play. Yeah, it's Elliot. going to be enough. To move the chains. Good push up front. Elliot with enough to get that first down. Elliot probably going to be that number one guy this year when you lose Isaiah Fonse and, and a couple other guys from that offense backfield. But Elliot, really good, and he knows how to run the ball here on this turf. Yeah, well, and, and had a great success in Montana State. Very fortunate. I mean, you lose a kid like uh, Afonso to the transfer portal, your all time leading rusher is a big deal, but. You know, people forget that he only rushed, the, or he only played in the last three games of the year last year, and so Montana State will return their top five rushing leaders from a year ago, starting with the man that just threw that one downfield incomplete in Tommy Malott. Yeah, Malott, and that's one thing Coach Vegan talked about in uh, this week in the press conferences was, you know, he's been impressed with the way Tommy has really stepped up in the passing game. And that's the thing that, you know, has, has bothered Tommy or you know, it's been around him since he came out of high school was can he throw. He showed his first year as a freshman in that playoff game. He can throw. I think there's no doubt about that. I think uh, because he runs the ball so well, 
that uh, and is such an effective rusher that you know he gets a little bit a bad rap that people don't want to recognize the throwing game but that is as you said coach vegan as he delivers a dart there Tell on the what, little I dig the christian, and I. christian and naya with the reception and that's enough to move the chains for the blue squad but you they've talked about that one of the things that they were working on and particularly with the yellow jersey is keeping tommy in the pocket this spring and have him sit a little longer and go through his progressions, uh, check down through his reads where I don't know that he's been too quick to leave the pocket because almost uh, every time something good happens when he does. But, again, spring is a time where you're trying to broaden your skills and improve. Uh, we all know he can rush the football. Yeah, we're not going to see a whole lot of that today because they, they already know what they got there. He'll fake that and handoff and then he'll bust yeah. it off the left side on, and <laughs> on cue you're starting off here you can go 0 for 100 like i was last year trying to, um, to guess a play but again a, that's a play that's been very effective the last couple years as you see him fake and there's just so much pressure that he puts on a defense with his ability to rush the football uh, and again chambers the same way yep. both of those guys the one and two rushers from a year ago so it'll be second and short. Malott with Elliott standing right behind him. He'll fake the handoff. He'll pass to the right. That one will be complete. Anaya again. And, you know, when you lose the receivers you did last year and the last couple of years, you're going to see a whole lot of new names in the receiving core this year, like you mentioned. But Anaya, so far, looking good after yeah, two catches. Yeah, uh, is looking really good. He's, and they look to be really on the same page uh, as they go through that. He's made a couple of good reads on the defense, and the ball has been delivered on time and right in the middle of the chest. Redshirt freshman out of Chandler, Arizona, is Anaya. A little toss sweep. That'll go off left side, Blake, uh, or uh, Lanyata, Lanyata Alexander Jr. He's one of the new guys coming in, a transfer out of Washington, also Arizona State, and he is expected to have a big season for Montana State. Yeah, a pretty big body out there, 6'3", 206. And that time you're seeing it a little uh, similar to the way they used uh, Willie Patterson and Marquis Johnson last year, just coming underneath that formation. He is a little bit bigger bigger man to bring down than those guys were but still effective got a little bit of a pickup of about five yards now a lot sets the offense he's got two receivers to his left two to the right elliott stands off his left hip he'll take the snap quick fake to the right pass off elliott out of the backfield to the left he stays on his feet and keeps in bounds and i think he's got enough for a first down yeah makes the first man miss i didn't couldn't catch the number from here that might have been rylan ort that was the first guy there and as we get another look at it yeah he just twist out no it's not ort uh, excuse me that was number 43 instead that was uh, kato riley who just misses him a little bit over the top not bad but gave him enough room uh, to pick this thing up. And if you're a Bobcat fan, that O'Reilly name the last few years really has stood out on that defense. Now McCade looking to take the place yeah, of Callahan. No no doubt about that. Uh, Callahan O'Reilly is a guy that his career just kept getting better. Someone that really elevated his play from year to year. So we see they go wide here and one-on-one -on -one in the open field. And I think that's going to be uh, Louis LaCappa that makes the stop there, but not until the Bobcats pick up near first down yardage. They're going to be about a yard short as they get inside the 10. Nice little drive here being put together by the Blue Squad. And how important is it, Mike, in, t in the spring scrimmage to wrap things up, to play well, because you've, you've had a tough spring season you come in, you obviously want the coaches to have the freshest look on tape. Yeah, well, I think Coach Vegan mentioned that um, earlier this week in his interview, and different coaches take a different perspective, but he really thinks that this is a very good evaluation period. So I think it does it does matter what you put down on film today. As we see Tommy Malott that time with the quarterback pulls game. it down, nobody open. I think uh, yellow jersey or not, that one was probably going into the end zone. It definitely was, and they're going to raise the hands, the officials do. So touchdown 
You see just nobody out there as Tommy breaks the pocket and those two guys, uh, defenders waiting him for him at the one or two. But I, I got to believe from what we've seen historically from number four <laughs> that uh, <laughs> two guys waiting for him with a head steam like he had was not going to be enough. No, and so a touchdown for Montana State. Blue squad. And they're going to go for two. Interesting because you, you have to replace a kicker. But going for two here right off the bat, and that was Marquis Johnson out of the backfield. Marquis Johnson with the run. Picks up one on the play. Yeah, just that time the defensive line and the backers just swarmed that thing, and it was not coming close. All right, well, we will wait. What's going on on the field? Let's send it down to DJ Bauer. He's standing by with new Bobcat basketball coach, Mr. Logie. Yes, Matt Logie, the 24th head basketball coach in Montana State men's Bobcats history. Uh, so tell me, first impressions here in Bozeman Bobcat Stadium. What do you think, Coach? Oh, what a beautiful day, man. It's uh, exciting to be here. Got a great turnout here for the spring game, so we're, we're thrilled. And, uh, you know, obviously you come from a long line of success. Success with oh, Whitworth at the D3 level, success with the D2 level with Point Loma. What made you decide that Montana State was the right choice for you coming here and being the coach of the Bobcats? Well, it was really easy. It just came down to two things. It was the culture of the program that was here and the community. You know, those two things were uh, huge selling points. And, uh, you know, obviously this is a historic program. A lot of success lately. Obviously two straight Big Sky championships. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to seeing what you do here. Thank you so much. So, thank you so much for coming on and doing this quick interview with me. We'll send it back to you guys in the studio and back to the game action. Thanks, Deej. So they uh, did not rule that a touchdown when Tommy ran it. And uh, appreciate Coach Logie. I think we do finally get into the end zone after an incompletion. So it was not a two-point try. It was a first and goal. Well, uh, interesting, yeah, they put the points on the board, and, uh, and then they left them up there. And uh, we did see at least one official signal uh, touchdown on an initial. I think what they did there was because they can't hit him a lot, uh, they knocked. They called him dead at the yeah. at the what was it the one and a half approximately. So, uh, nonetheless, they did get in, and now we will get a look at a little change in the kicking game here for Montana State. So Miles Sandstead, a redshirt freshman from Alexandria, Minnesota, and thanks again to DJ and Coach Logie. I mean, he's had a whirlwind week after being named the head coach on Monday afternoon. He was introduced on Wednesday and talking with us here on a Saturday. As that kick was good, but. You know, big things for Bobcat basketball. There's a lot of big things going on here on campus at Montana State, and, and that's definitely one of them. And replacing Danny Sprinkle, that culture, you know, you hate to see a coach, a hometown boy leave, but lots of success for Coach Logie uh, in his past. His winning percentage, over 80%. Yeah, it's crazy. I, I want to say the third uh, in all of NCAA at this point, which is very impressive. I heard some great things by some friends of mine that, uh, I don't know if the ball's pumped or stuffed personally, but uh, some guys that are the, in the industry had some great things to say about uh, Coach Logie this week. And uh, I think Montana State, as you said, big shoes to fill. Great success under Coach Sprinkle has earned him the ability to move up, took a couple of assistants with him. So it, it'll be a little bit of a new start. We'll see if uh, some of those guys from the portal end up sticking around. But uh, I got to think that, uh, it's been a, a really solid hire for Montana State. So Chance Wilson in at quarterback, and it looks like he's going to be allowed to get hit <laughs> as he's not wearing the yellow. Well, I think Chance is going to come in, and we see there, and it's a nice play on the outside. Looks like uh, it's going to be 42. Uh, Ryan Cran coming in to make the stop, but Chance Wilson is a kid who uh, should be back home uh, getting ready for his senior prom, but made the decision to leave <laughs> high school early and has checked in here at Montana State, and I think the reason uh, you're not seeing him in yellow is one, uh, brand new to the depth chart, but also he can really run the football. We'll see how he does when we come back. You're watching the Bobcat Sunny Holland Classic right here on Welcome back to Bozeman. Jason Walker, Mike Callahan, DJ Bauer, Chance Wilson in a quarterback right now for the White Squad, which trails 7 nothing here in the Sunny Holland Classic. And we've seen four plays, Mike, out of uh, Wilson and four run plays. That's what the Bobcats like, quarterbacks that can do a whole lot of things. Well, and he has had some success rushing the football uh, in spring ball in their first two uh, spring outings leading into today. But so far on that series, uh, the defense did a great job of shutting the young signal caller down. That time of the last play was uh, Fredrickson that was, was able to get there. 
going to bring up fourth, and they are going to punt this one away. Yeah, this will be Casey Kotzman from Butte, who uh, had, well, he's the all-time kicker at Butte High. He's got a heck of a leg for field goals. We'll see how he can punt. And that's one thing, Montana State replacing a punter and in uh, Bryce Layton and also a kicker in Blake Glesner. Yeah, as we, uh, Glessner moving on to uh, UCLA, great for him. He certainly had the success and earned that that chance to compete at uh, a higher level. And uh, Layton, a great student, yeah. made a decision he's going to graduate uh, early. And uh, uh, Tommy Sullivan, his long snapper, described uh, his, his study load as unbelievable and saying that we completely understand while he would want to move and focus and have the extra time to take care of that. But both Blue those guys here. did a great job for Montana State, and they will be difficult to replace. They definitely will, as the Blue will take over. And I think, now well, I can't see his number from here. That is another new quarterback. That is uh, Luke Abshire, retro freshman out of Spokane. Yeah, Luke's going to come out and open up on first down, throw a little underneath route for a completion. A lot of these guys, we've seen a lot of guys delivering the ball well for Montana State. That's the third quarterback we've had complete passes here as we move into what is the second quarter of a little bit of a condensed scrimmage situation. Yeah, set up for three running quarters and then a full fourth quarter of uh, like it was a real game. It'll be interesting to see if the refs implement the new rule that was just voted on this week. The clock does not stop anymore on first downs. Yeah, that's interesting. It, it uh, I think that'll be sort of a quick adjustment. Obviously, uh, the coaching staff will be aware of it and making the difference. But I do think the intent of the rule in shortening the game a little bit is, is very solid. Um, it is going to be an adjustment like every rule change is, but I think with the pace that we see, nearly every offense is able to move at and get lined up that I think it, it won't have as big an impact on the game as some of the rule changes that we've seen in the past, but definitely shorten that thing up a little bit. A couple of wide receivers to the left for Abshire. I believe that's Marquis Johnson in the backfield. Abshire is going to fake right, roll to his left. He'll keep it himself. And it takes a good hit there. I, Drew Polidor comes up and lays some lumber on him from his free safety position. That's a nice job by Polidor, a guy that is moving actually from from the corner situation uh, to the safety uh, transition for him this spring. Obviously right there, it looked like it might be working. So we're going to see a punt coming up for the blue, which leads 7 nothing. Stats really don't matter, do they, in a game like this? No, I think you want to, you obviously, individually, you want to put up big numbers and you want to see if you can get some rhythm with your various position groups moving the football. But, yeah, this is more about, yeah, I think, almost more situational uh, from an evaluation standpoint. So a punt and a fair catch. I think, every, like you said, on kickoffs, everything's going to be just blown dead right away. And that'll be white ball, so we'll see who comes out to run the quarterbacks again. And it looks like it's going to be Wilson for the second consecutive series. I know the Bobcats are high on him. Yeah, as we said, he is a youngster on campus early. Um, obviously a, a tremendous amount of learning to do when you haven't. Uh, you're playing a, a very complicated position and you weren't here in the fall. So uh, a lot of catch up for him. I think they'll probably, as we saw in that first series with him, kept it pretty simple having run the ball. But maybe we'll get a look at that arm in this series. He's got trips to his left. He'll fake the pass, take off running, and great play coming up to make the tackle. Kendrick Bailey, a senior out of uh, California. Well, part of the thing about spring ball is that these guys have been going against each other every day and they know they know what each individual does and they know that a young quarterback here that as we mentioned is just coming you know could be running track at his high school this weekend is playing uh fcs level football so they got a pretty good idea what his specialty is and you saw kendrick came up he was uh, moving on the snap on that one second and ten 
This time we'll get to see the arm. Well, now he'll pull it down and run. Nothing open downfield. Slips one tackle, and he's brought down, diving forward up to the 28. You can see good reaction. Nobody open. He tucked it. He waited. And then he tucked and took off. Yeah, and when actually one of his more successful runs that time as he was able to, as you say, recognize that there was nothing there and bring that up the middle of the field. So it'll be third and short, gain of about nine for Wilson and the White squad. Jared White and Chance Wilson, White the running back. Wilson the freshman from Oklahoma. And this one off White. White's got a great block. Good stiff arm. I think he stayed on his feet at the 40. He's up to the 42-yard line before it's blown down. Good run play right up the middle, Mike. Yeah, that was, I think, you saw had a defense that was maybe looking for pass there. They decided to get away from it. And look at Justice Perkins with the good block inside. And then it's just a great job of staying on his feet. Just came down on top of the tackler. And picked up a few more, but uh, moving the chains and uh, getting close to midfield. Wilson looking good in his technical Bobcat debut here in front of pretty good crowd here for the Sunny Holland Classic, the end of spring scrimmage for Montana State. Fake the handoff. Wilson, and like you said earlier, they kind of know what he's out there for, and Miles uh, Jackson came up to make the stop. Yeah, they just not fooled moving towards the towards the play even before it starts. So uh, advantage defense in that you get to, when you are going at it for 15, 17 packets or practices, whatever it may be, again, you're not going to get fooled. And in a situation like this, you got an offense really that's, it's, it's simplified for a young quarterback. Plus, you don't want to show a whole heck of a lot in the spring to begin with. Right. Yeah. You got other other schools in the Big Sky are watching this. Wilson fakes the handoff. This time we'll see the arm for the first time. That pass a little short as it one hops into the arms of the intended receiver, Zachary Dodson Green. Cabin number 16, Zachary Dodson Green. Good coverage that time on the outside as well. Jackson Harmon, number 13 at that right cornerback, was, was there in coverage. They're down and as you said, go. ball ball thrown. If it would have been perfect, he would have still been, I think, a little short of that first down, but just a little bit short on the throw. Hey, it was a good catch off the turf, though, the one hop. Play shortstop, right? Yeah, yeah. shortstop. <laughs> so third and about 13 here for Wilson and the White squad. Midway point here of this second quarter. Wilson pressured, got the throw off, and a great catch made by Dodson Green over on the far side. But that pressure was coming. Wilson felt it and delivered a strike. Yeah, it did. That was a great job. It looked like uh, we almost uh, the replay, the redo of the play before. Same route. Ball thrown a little better that time. Receiver still had to come back, so he didn't have, to, didn't have a chance to go make a uh, an effort for that first down. Had to dive and get it, but it's going to be fourth and about one and a half, two yards inside blue territory now, and the white offense is going to stay on the field. Got white off to the right. He'll take the handoff from Wilson. Get around the outside, and he's got some running room before he's finally pushed out of bounds by Kendrick Bailey on the far sideline. Boy, you can really see the burst from Gerald White. Not sure the contain was lost on the defense, the right side of the field, but uh, the burst of number 12 was Jared White was pretty impressive there. Once he saw that opening, he really kicked it into high gear. You know what's great about White is we see uh, Jordan, Reed, Jordan quarterback. Reed come back in a quarterback, but White from Frisco, Texas, and. I'm sure he'd like to go back home in, in January. <laughs> yeah, that would be a nice homecoming, wouldn't it? Well, we oh. read passing far sideline. That'll be incomplete. No flag. And while we have the chance, let's send it on down to D.J. Bauer. Yes, I am here with Athletic Director Leon Costello, a new exciting era for uh, Bobcat basketball, of course. Tell me, what makes you think that uh, choosing Matt Logan was the right hire to lead the program? Well, as in, any time you're looking for a new coach, you want the right fit. And uh, obviously his connections here to the Northwest, uh, his connections through California, um, but really in kind of where we are as a program, having a guy that's coming in, being such a successful head coach, uh, hadn't played the Division One level, coached the Division One level, uh, we saw a lot of things that we really, really 
really liked, and uh, I'm excited to get it going. And I know him and his staff are too. They're already here, and they're hitting the ground running, and uh, that's what we like to see, you know, especially this day and age in college basketball, you know, kind of stop the bleeding, if you will, um, and t- kind of have the water settle and, and time to move forward. All right. Well, thank you so much for speaking with me today. You got it. Thank All you. right. Back to the action. Thanks, DJ, and thank you to Leon Costello. Man, Leon and uh, President Wadet Cruzado have done a great job with their hires over the years and the success of the athletics program here at Montana State. A lot of credit goes to President Cruzado and Leon Costello. I couldn't agree more, and, and I think Montana State athletics from top to bottom has never been more healthy than it is right now. I mean, you see... Uh, the championships in basketball last year they had a phenomenal year the year before uh, they were the the all sports trophy winner on the men's side so I think uh, as we see it looks like they're gonna the referees are gonna get together they're look the defense is trying to sell pick and it looks like they are gonna yeah. That is going to be the call on the field. I think that was Aiden Parks with the diving catch. As they get another look at it. They force him out of the pocket. It's ball thrown. It looks like, oh, man. That's, well, that's a great. <laughs> I don't, I, we're not going to get the replay looks today that we would in the fall because they definitely would look at that. But what a great job of getting got that left arm underneath the ball and brought it into one hand. Okay, let's take a look. I, that's that's pretty good, <laughs> and the concentration. To yeah, all that in. Yeah, that is that's a big play. Gentleman that was moved uh, to to backer and uh, already making plays. Great shots by our camera guys. It's Malat, quick throw, and that is complete off to Christian Anaya. And we mentioned it as we take All right, here we go the, again. What's the call here? I think he's got it. I'm going to go with, uh, and I'll, I will admit my defensive prejudice, but that is a pick all day long. <laughs> I do like the throw, though, by Reed. He, he had a little Bernie Kosar-esque there, sidearm, uh, resulting in the interception, however. But Malat with that pass to Anaya, and we talked about it in the first quarter, was Anaya seeming to be Malat's go-to right now as Malat keeps this one himself, busts it out to the outside, and they're going to blow it dead about the 39-yard line. I don't know if you could, you you got to be real real <laughs> sure that Tommy Malott was going to get ta- uh, tackled there to pull that one down. Yeah, that's that's uh, definitely uh, uh, you can see here he does a good job pulling it right. Reed cuts it to the outside. A couple of Bobcats there. Uh, that'll be a uh, discussion in the locker room later as to what the result of would have been had that been live. I think that would have been about a seventy yard touchdown run. <laughs> Malad, pass complete off to the right, and good coverage out there to allow or not allow the offensive wide receiver, I believe that is Alexander Jr., to get any more yardage. But Malat's arm looking good here. Boy, he has thrown some things on a rope today. Yeah, it looks uh, just more confident in the pocket. We've seen a little bit different trajectory uh, and has thrown the ball well. Uh, that time after the catch was well defended. Third and about one coming up for the blue, which leads seven nothing here. Just under two minutes left in the second, and the high snap, the first real mistake we've seen from either team. A lot tracks it down and then just throws it out of bounds. But good hands there by Malat. Took the one hopper and it'll be fourth and short. Yeah, you can see that one was just launched. Uh, Malat gets a, a good hop. Gets a clean, clean throw and is able to. He puts that one into the bleachers. There was no doubt where that one was going, but uh, the right play, a good job of a quarterback on fourth and very short, making the kind of play that doesn't stick you deep. You know that could have easily been back at, at their own 20-yard line. Getting that thing out of bounds and living to fight another day is definitely the right play. And an experienced play, you can see. You don't know if you'd see that from a redshirt freshman or a, a freshman coming in, but you never know. Yeah, well, we know from you know just the history of it. Tommy Malat is, is a great decision maker. That punt, a by, true understanding of the game. Yes. Well, he's a butte guy. You got to know football. Yeah, well, right? yeah, right. They're all, <laughs> they're all you know great scholars of the game, right? Absolutely. Or at least uh, maybe not all. I, I've got a few guys that are coming to mind <laughs> on both sides of that ledger right now. Oh. 
It'll be a first down for the white. It's interesting. They're moving them back about 10 yards after the punts. But we'll get a chance to see Reed again, a quarterback. Who has the advantage in a scrimmage like this? Is it the offense or the defense? I think it's the defense, and the, the offense is not going to show a lot of the real wrinkles that they have. And the defense, as you know, I've mentioned a couple times, they've seen them for you know 15 practices now and have a pretty good idea of, of what we're going to run. Uh, and so I think it's a tougher day to win offensively. If you're having a whole lot of success, in a scrimmage like this with, with these situations, you're going to really worry about your defense. <laughs> that pass from Reed completed out to Garrett Kuhn for a gain of about four. Now Reed's going to pass to his right. Good defense, but a great catch made by tight end Noah Smith, a redshirt freshman from Joshua, Texas. So that'll be a first down. Yeah, he's got plenty of pressure on him. It was a Miles Jackson in coverage. Really solid job that time by him bringing that ball in. Read back to pass for the third time, and that one, that route was jumped by Jackson Harmon, a sophomore from Anchorage, Alaska. That could have been a pick six the other way. Yeah, Harmon definitely saw that one coming. Does a nice job of driving up and getting his hands on this. Uh, not quite able to bring it in. Good job by the receiver that time. Uh, Dodson Green sort of turning in the defender and getting a hand in there and breaking that one up. Second down and 10 for the white team, which trails 7 nothing. About 49 seconds left to play here in this abbreviated second quarter. And that pass is intercepted. Overthrowing the receiver was Reed. And taking it back to the house is Blake Stillwell. He's a sophomore transfer from the New Mexico Military Institute. And he is very highly ranked as a transfer coming in for the Bobcats. Well, he was just sitting back playing over the top of the coverage that time and just a, a mistake in the throw, uh, took advantage of it, and then able to, to make a, the big play out of it and get that thing into the end zone. Just another, you know, just a new face contributing in that secondary for the Bobcats. So Miles Sandstead will come on for the extra point. As we've seen Kautzman do the punting and Sandstead so far do the kicking. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. And just like that, the blue, thanks to the pick six, goes up 14 zip. Look at that. Just wide open. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> Not a, bit, a lot of real hungry tacklers in, in that uh, frame for <laughs> no, there us. Wasn't. Smith's yes. the only one in there. <laughs> But in a in in a scrimmage, you're going to see some some miscues. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I really you could you can honestly say you mentioned kind of the first first two miscues or mistakes of the afternoon on either side. We had the the bad snap, and then the, just a little overthrow there, and uh, defense, and still well able to make a, a big play out of that mistake. So a first down here for the white squad. Wilson hands this one off to Kuhn, and Kuhn off right side stays on his feet, got through one tackle, and then ran into the pile, and he's got a good gain of about eight. Yeah, nice job getting behind some good blocking on the right side of formation. Garrett Kuhn, another guy uh, that has contributed offensively, one of that long list of rushers that had uh, good success a year ago, and we're going to see this time it's going to be Wilson pull this one off the right side, and he is going to have enough to pick up the first down, but we got a coach down on that sideline. <laughs> That's not going to play well in the film room. Uh, or maybe, no, that I don't know if that is a coach. I don't but, I think it was just but like. But definitely a support <laughs> uh, guy on the, the support staff for, for Montana State. Someone who should have been a little further from the field. Yeah, he definitely he should have been. And uh, he'll be all right. Trainers Does are, seem to be up and yep. moving. He's tucking that hat on. And we'll get uh, at least one more snap in this first half. Wilson's going to hand this one off. Kuhn, full steam ahead right up the front, and he's brought down there by Jake Vegan. 
the Bozeman, the Gallatin Raptor. And that brings us to halftime of the Sunny Holland Classic. To break it down. 14-0. The blue leads the white here on SWX. Hour here. And while we have this opportunity at halftime, 14-0, the blue squad leading the white. Let's send it down to DJ, who's with Coach Vegan. All right, here I am with the man himself, head coach of the Bobcats, Renton Vegan. What are you seeing so far from the spring game that you're enjoying? Well, we've got a lot of guys out there getting valuable reps. And this crowd, this is great. Oh, we got a, we got a nice day here, a great crowd. And, and a lot of our guys, it's the first time they've played in front of people in a while since they've been in high school. So that, that part, the guys are competing well. Um, you know, it's not going to be necessarily the fireworks that we would see on a normal Saturday, but uh, you know, the guys are competing and getting valuable reps, like I said. Now, opportunity, obviously, for a lot of these young guys to come out and kind of show what they've got for the first time. So in terms of those guys who are going to come in, fill those replacement roles, what do you see them? Well, like I said, they're taking advantage of this opportunity. You know, uh, a young guy, a couple of young guys, receivers, for instance, uh, Christian Nia, Junior Alexander, um, you know, showing up so far. I know on the defensive side of Blake Stillwell returning that interception, brand new to the program. You know, those are, those are the opportunities you can't create in a practice. So it happens in the flow of the game. We're keeping score. We're keeping time. A little bit more on this one today, and uh, look forward to a good second half. And one more question for you. What is it like just getting to come back out on this field again, see the blue and gold Bobcat Nation, and uh, enjoy it? Oh, it's awesome. Uh, we've got an incredible following, uh, not only here in Bozeman, but across our state. So uh, it's a great crowd here, but I hope uh, televisions are tuned in across the state and, and just anxious to see what we have going in September. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Let's get it back to the start of the third quarter. All right. Thanks, DJ, and thanks, Coach Vegan, for taking the time out. And appreciate his time, Mike. And he's done such a great job over his first couple of seasons here in Bozeman. Yeah, a pretty impressive run for, uh, you know, you got two seasons under your belt and you've been to the chipper one time and then you uh, got beaten the semis the following year. That's, that's a pretty good start. And uh, I know something that certainly – this is a group that's not satisfied with those results and is is looking for to climb up and not only be in that championship game but bring home a trophy to Montana State. So we open up the third quarter with a quick pass and a great run out of the uh, backfield. Marquis Johnson taking the pass from Luke Abshire, who starts the third, uh, the freshman, the redshirt out of Spokane, Washington. And Marquis Johnson, one of those guys that – we're going to expect to see a lot of this season. He's one of those guys, and you could see it a year ago in the fall, that they, they just need to find ways to get him the ball because he's such an explosive athlete, uh, you know, running the ball, uh, catching the ball out of the backfield. Uh, saw him a lot on the, the reverse uh, type action, the zoom motion underneath where they'd give him the ball. So, yeah, he's a guy that is going to go make plays. You just want to give him opportunities. That play was blown up right away behind the line of scrimmage and i think that was jace fitzgerald the dylan beaver coming through to to blow that one up early yeah i think he had some help too uh, kenneth Iden was there uh it looked like neil daly number 14 playing a little inside backer was there as well uh, they had a pretty good idea, good idea of what was coming jason yeah well you, you mentioned it you try to get marquee johnson the ball and the defense knows that when he's on the field. As Abshire sends a receiver in motion, they'll flip that off to the receiver. That is uh, Lignata Alexander. I guess the coach called him Junior Alexander. Yeah, I've heard him uh, referred to uh, by coach as Junior in his interviews as well. Uh, has talked about him multiple times. He's a guy that's, uh, that's had some success in their early scrimmages, and we're getting a good look at him today. Hunter. Parsons in on that stop. It's third and about 15 for the blue, which leads 14 nothing here in the third. Again, running clock in the third. We're supposed to see a full fourth quarter type football game. As Abshire checks back to pass, comes sideline. The adjustment was made by Christian and Anaya, the pass was a little bit over his head, but there was good coverage out there, too. Yeah, Miles Jackson in coverage. We've seen him. Those two have, have matched up a few times this afternoon. Uh, that time, I think that ball was, was thrown with the understanding that you're going to give your receiver a chance to maybe go up and make a play here on the outside. But as you said, was good, solid coverage and really a good decision, putting that a little bit high and behind him. So maybe had a chance to go make a great play, but really it was, you know, move on, don't take the sack. Well, it's one of those plays, too, that it looked like, Mike, that it was 
either my guy's going to catch it or nobody's going to catch it. Perfect. Not, yeah, that's not a mistake to be made. You said that so much better than my. I was. <laughs> I rambled on, and then you just got it done. I appreciate that. Well, you gave me the way to, to, <laughs> to, to shorten it up. <laughs> we get a whistle and a stoppage and a timeout taken by the Blue Coaches. Blue Coaches, by the way, led by Willie Matt Garza. Taylor Housewright leading the white. You know, this is the Sunny Hall and Classic, and it's the first time that teams have been on this field since Sunny passed away last December, and we send it down to DJ Bauer for more. Yeah, this is the first Sunny Holly Classic to be played since he died in December, but of course his legacy will live on forever with friends and family here in Bozeman and in his hometown of Butte. Had a special connection with two stars from the 1976 championship team, Dan and Don Newland. Boy, did they have some good stories about the Chief. I think my favorite was whenever they took a vacation to Hawaii, and uh, you know, he was kind of an imposing figure with his coat and his big boots, but had a sense of humor too, took the boys out surfing. One wave just picked him up and slammed him down on the beach. He was covered in bruises and black eyes. Him and the Eulens just kept laughing about it, and that's a, that's a story that kind of preserves his legacy and, and realizes why he was the greatest Bobcat and will help to preserve his legacy too when he's inducted in June into the Montana Football Hall of Fame. The coverage will be here on SWX. Thanks, DJ. Great story, great man, and great legacy. Just an unbelievable legend at Montana State, champion as a player, champion as a coach, and even a greater champion as an ambassador for Montana State football and Montana State University. Third and long, but you go back to Sonny and, and the impact he had, Not like you said, not only as a football player, but as the coach, national championship on both ends, and, and a big part of that 84 title, too, even though he wasn't on the sidelines. Well, I, yeah, I, uh, I can remember being on the bus in South, uh, in South Carolina in '84, and and he was uh, showing us his ring and <laughs> and talking about things. And I tell you, if you, if you have uh, ever seen a guy's, we may not have been a, guy, a bunch of guys that, that paid a lot of attention a lot of the time, but uh, you could have heard a pin drop when that man spoke to a, to a football team as well as any group of people. He was just one of a kind. Well, and I think you look back to when he passed and then the first game after uh, we lost him, you know, the, the gathering from the 76 squad at the champion, at the trophy, or at the uh, statue, I beg your pardon, of Sonny and, and his family being there, it was just awesome. And then the end zone being named after him. Uh, back, I guess this is 13 years now that that end zone's been here. So good defense by the blue forces another punt by Casey Kautzman, another Butte guy. And that one will go to the 50 where Marquis Johnson hauls it in. You know, you talk about the guys that are lost. You know, and as I, Isaiah Fonse, no doubt about that. Aaron Girl, uh, Blake Glesner, Trey Yates moving on down to the NAI over at Montana Tech. But it's the guys that are here still. And, yeah, you can't replace a lot of those. But, you know, we, you and I talked about it before the game, Mike, that guys move on every year. Graduation or retirement or now transfer. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's always been the nature of college sports. Um, it happens a little bit different now than it, it did before when you've got, you know, one and dones and in uh, basketball and the transfer portal has made a difference. But it's still about, you know, being able to reload and not retool, and I think that is one place that Montana State is in more than they've ever been in in my memory is there's just so much depth here. You know, you, you have a guy that, that moves on or a guy that goes down during the season, which, you know, there's going to be plenty of that. Uh, I just think that this is a, a deeper, more talented football program than we've ever seen. Malott's pass was complete to Junior Alexander. Brings up second and two. That was a nice little move by Alexander to slip through two defenders to gain a couple of extra yards. Now Malott fakes the handoff. He's off running. They're going to call that a tackle in the backfield. <laughs> I don't, every time I see a Ben Seymour with the with the stop, he's going to get credit for that tackle. But Tommy, that's twice now. He goes, wait a second. Ben's, Ben's going to tell you without hesitation that he would have made that play. And that Malat is extremely fortunate that they blew it dead. Number four is going to have a little bit different vision. Yeah. Uh, 
so it'll be a loss of a couple. It'll be third and four now for Malott and the Blue, which leads 14-0 here. Six and a half to go in the third. Have you been have you been impressed with the way the offensive lines have worked on both sides? I have been, and I think the way that they're working together uh, has been impressive to me. And I think that's something that that's, a, that's an a, an area of college football that, at least for me, has become so much so much more impressive. And maybe it was just my ignorance, but you know, you talk about Montana State and, the, and their outside zone play. It's it's choreography, it's ballet, the way that those guys are able to work together. And uh, I think it's just a fascinating part of the of the way the game has evolved and that those guys have become so much more athletic. Uh, and you just look at the way that the, the communication factor and dropping a block and moving on, who's coming off the double team, I just, uh, I'm more impressed by about it each and every year. They'll run the option, and that on fourth down gets blown up in the backfield. Miles Jackson again another stop and and that'll be a turnover on downs but you look at the depth all five starters back this year uh, coming into the fall projected to to be all back and healthy and and like you said that's a depth that that is always a struggle for any team in in yeah and i think that not only is it impressive that they're returning all five guys from a from a group that that led the the conference in rushing um but the depth behind them, I think, is, you know, those guys are, are still here, but that group behind them has improved and really uh, are ready to push and, and try and get their spot as well. See Chance Wilson back in. That pass completed, and then a good hit, but the catch made by Dodson Green. We've heard his name a couple of times. But go back to that offensive line real quick, because last year you remember coming into the season, the talk was, well, they're not going to be as good as they were the year before. Lost everybody. <laughs> graduated. Lost a great player to the portal. Um, yeah, and they just stepped up as a very young group and just did an unbelievable job. And I think, as I, I, I talked about a little bit ago, is the most impressive thing about them was the way that they worked together. And, and credit Coach Brian Armstrong for, for doing a great job with those young men. Of course, this week, as we see, Chance was able, Wilson is able to break one off here on the right side. But yeah, Brian Armstrong uh, did a phenomenal job, and it, and it propelled him to now he's the offensive line coach at Fresno State. Coach Al Johnson comes in and uh, replaces him. Comes in from the University of Wisconsin. So while I don't think we'll see, there may be some stylistic changes in the, in the way that they're coached uh, as far as the, the fundamentals and the style of play. I think uh, that we're pretty much locked in as an offensive unit uh, after the great success they've had uh, the last two years for sure. Wilson with a great run sets up first down trips to his left he'll drop back to pass surveys throws again that sidearm throw and he, when he feels the pressure he, he gets rid of it with that sidearm that one intended for Dodson Green does a nice job when he felt that pressure of, of moving up in the, in the pocket uh, and that is something that you don't often see from, you know, particularly, again, don't want to, to beat a dead horse here, but this kid's, you know, should be in high school. You know, he, he made the decision to graduate early and come here and be a part of spring ball. Uh, so that's, he, that's a lot of courage to walk up in the middle of that front as your pocket starts to deteriorate. Well, we saw Arch Manning do it at Texas and Chance Wilson doing it here. That handoff to Kuhn, and he'll get a couple of yards off the left side. We talked about the offense, Mike. How about the defensive line? What are you liking? Well, I think, you know, some of those we saw uh, Schmidt make a great play earlier. A lot of those guys are, you know, some of those bigger boys. I know that uh, Brat isn't playing today. Uh, Sebastian Valdez, who is sort of an anchor of that defensive front, is not a part of it today and, and hasn't been participating in spring. But, again, creating opportunities and reps for some of these younger guys, all that does is strengthen the, uh, your team when it comes to September. It'll be third and nine for the white squad. Kuhn stands directly behind Wilson. High snap. Good handoff to Kuhn. And Kuhn, look at that speed as he busts through. That looked like he was going to go for a gain of a couple. He ends up turning it into a gain of about six. Yeah, good vision that time. He, he finds the hole, and then he watch him pump this to the outside. Makes a man 
miss early and then uh, brought down there at the end of the play, number 27, Brock Steele. So we've seen movement here by the white. And mark it back uh, about a yard and a half from where he ended up rolling two. So inside the 20 for the first time is the white team. And another handoff to Kuhn, almost the same play. And Kuhn, again, with the good vision, skips through the line and picks up the first down at about the 10. Yeah, that time the Montana State offense, they really overloaded that right side. They had their trip receivers to the outside. They stacked the fullback uh, up over the, the right tackle and then came back and ran it to the the right, or to the, excuse me, the, the offensive left where there just weren't a lot of numbers for Montana State. That's a, not only a, a well-executed, play but an extremely well designed play so it'll be first and goal at the 10 and Wilson putting together a good drive for the white squad here again the freshman from Oklahoma and we're going to get a whistle and a delay of game we'll blame that one on the coaches Well, we see a lot of delay games down in that end during the year when that sign, Sonny Hawn end zone is uh, is doing their thing. But today, uh, not a lot of noise coming from down there. Uh, just that time, maybe a little late coming in and the, and the young freshman a little late processing. So that's going to knock them back five. Well, it would have been a regular game. As I yeah, see again, moved, as actually you, moved up a half. As a you year. pointed out <laughs> earlier, there's a there's a guy in the backfield in a blue vest that sort of is overriding the men in stripes this afternoon. So Wilson, they'll still say first and goal here. Kuhn off to his right. A bunch of receivers. Pass completed to Kuhn, who had to turn around and juggle it, and it's a touchdown for the White. Boy, nice job by Kuhn. Now that ball was thrown behind him. He makes a great play to come back and get it. But, boy, they, the offense had the defense's number that time. Stacked up that right side pretty solidly and ran them all across the field. Snuck Kuhn out of the backfield. Watch, everybody goes digs inside. They sneak him out, and there's just nobody home for that blue defense. A great catch by five and a little waltz in the end zone. I wonder if he had the little Max Scherzer sticky stuff on his hands there to haul that in. Yeah, I th he's disputing that. <laughs> it's just a, it's just, just a good catch. It's just rosin and super glue. <laughs> Low snap, and Reed pulls it in, and the kick from Kautzman is good, so that makes it 14-7. Just over 240 left to play here in that third quarter from the Sunny Holland Classic here in Bozeman. And I, I, you know, as a, if you're a Bobcat fan, you got to like what you see from really both sides of the football today. Well, I think you're, you're seeing a lot of different people make plays. You're seeing some solid line play uh, on both sides of the ball. So, yeah, I think, you know, a, a, a scrimmage, uh, first of all, you start without all that white stuff that we're seeing from a year <laughs> ago makes everything better. Uh, but, yeah, I think, you know, it's a scrimmage. You're going against itself, so every every good play is a bad play. Uh, but I think for the most part, it's been pretty balanced, a uh, very minimal number of mistakes. And I've seen from the skill positions as Malat hands it off to Johnson, who takes a good shot. But from the skill position, you're replacing a lot of guys. And I think you're seeing those guys step in and, and perform well here. And again, I know it's a scrimmage and I know you're not seeing everything, the, the entire playbook, but you got to like what you're seeing from the skill positions. Yeah, I, I would ag I would agree. And, boy, uh, they've got a, a, a lot of quarterbacks in that room that look like they could that deserve a shot on the field. I, you saw that time uh, Kenneth Iden comes in and wraps Marquis Johnson up in the backfield. They fake the handoff, and Malat over the middle. That was intended for Elijah Reynolds. Reynolds almost goes up and makes the one-handed grab here. That ball thrown almost perfectly, well defended. The DB is a little bit of a trail situation, but he almost pulled that one in. He needed the rosin. <laughs> Third and nine. I only brought that up because Scherzer's on the Mets, and the Mets are my favorite baseball team. There's Malat on third and long. 
Johnson stands to his right. He'll drop back to pass this time. And the field wide open, and Malad will take off. He'll be shy of the first down as a couple of the defenders were coming in, and that'll bring up fourth down for the blue squad. Oh, they give him the first. That's uh, a generous placement, I think, from where the, the two gentlemen that were going to try and make the play were standing. But, uh, again, move the chains. I think I think uh, tough to decide where he would have ended up here. But uh, That's close. Again, that'll be a battle for, for the locker room. <laughs> So first down from a lot in the blue. He'll turn, hand it off to Marky Johnson, who slipped the tackle in the backfield, but does not slip the rest of the squad wearing white. Just Chase across Fitzgerald the 35. Gerald along with uh, some other Bobcats. Ryland Ork uh, were there to make a good stop right at the line of scrimmage. Boy, Jace Fitzgerald, you know, he's a, he's another one of those Dillon products that Terry Thomas had as a coach for, you know, down there and. Basketball, football standout, track athlete as well. Sister was the Frontier Women's Basketball Player of the Year last year, co-player, Brindley. Younger sister just committed to Carroll to play hoops. So athletic family in those Fitzgeralds. Boy, I would say. Malott, and they're going to blow that one as Brody Greeby busting through, and that would have been a sack for sure. Good job, uh, Brody Greeby, a guy that's, that's made his presence known two years ago as a sort of a pass rush specialist. Last year is much more of an every down guy, but he's going to have to be a big leader on that defensive side of the football. He's got a lot of reps under his belt, and you saw him there just made himself a clean path to the quarterback. Well, you look at a guy like Greeby and, and Iden, the fourth out there, you know, that's two really good defensive ends for the, for the Bobcat defense. As Malott facing a third and seven. Sunshine here at Bobcat Stadium. Beautiful day in April in Bozeman. Handoff will go off right side. Elijah Elliott, first name, time he called his name in a, a few plays. Ben Seymour there to make the stop for the white defense. Another guy, starter from a year ago. And that is the end of three in Bozeman. A fourth down coming up for the blue, which leads the white. 14-7 here on SWX. Burritos and wraps, find them on Kagi, East Main in Belgrade, or online at mtcafem.com. Jason Walker, Mike Callahan, DJ Bauer. White team taking over, and after... Reed went nowhere on first down. That pass complete over the middle. And a good catch call, uh, hauled in there by Garrett Walsey, who's wearing 18 but listed as 19 or maybe is 19. <laughs> <laughs> Tough to tell. I think he, I think he is wearing 19, but uh, a good, good throw and catch that time to move the chains for this wide offense as they try and go down and uh, see if they can put one on the board here. They scored on the previous possession under Wilson, the White did. Hand off, and White takes his time, patient, waited for the hole to open up and gets a gain of seven. Yeah, nice job by White, but a, a great job by that offensive line opening some things up uh, there for him. Just had not a huge hole, but they had, uh, as they say, a hat on a hat, occupying those defenders and allowing the back to sort of just feel his way up the field for a nice gain on first down into blue territory. Yeah, just across the 50, the ball marked at the 48 and a half of the blue. Second down and three. Send the tight end in motion. It was Max Murphy, actually a fullback, as Elliott dragged down from behind. That tackle, yeah, Nick Corum in there first. Yeah, Quorum does a nice job of getting that. Looked like there was a little bit of a seam there, but Quorum is able to come across, make the tackle, bring him down by his feet, and going to bring up third down. Let's see what I'm guessing today that this is two down territory, <laughs> Jason. I yes. <laughs> so Reed will go from the gun, kind of overload that right side. Now they'll bring Murphy from the right to the left. And it off to White, who's wrapped up and go nowhere. And it'll be a fourth down. 
Boy, a bunch of Bobcats there to shut this thing down. They just rallied the football still well on the outside. Gets help from the inside pursuit. And it's going to be fourth and uh, fourth and four. And surprisingly, it is going to be uh, a, uh, a fourth down attempt yeah, here. I don't right. think we'll see this in the fall, but we're certainly going to see it today. Well, you know, you never know with, with Brent Vegan and Taylor Housewright and those guys. Sam Mix named the new running back coach, the Northern standout. And the pass incomplete intended for Walshie. And that'll be a turnover on downs. So it'll be blue ball again. Good defense. Pass fell incomplete. 14-7. I think this is the, the point where you're going to start to see just uh, both these sidelines, I think, are going to really start to compete from a from a finish standpoint where we're, we're going to do the actual clock. Uh, they want to come out and and, uh, and be uh, have the bragging rights going into the summer. Uh, some of these, so you've got a close game. So I think that I don't think we're going to see anybody let up here in the uh, final 847. Abshire in at quarterback. He'll roll to his right. They look like an option. Well, it is an option. We're going to get a block in the back, and that play is going to, in regular season, be called back. But the Yeah, we'll see what they do with this. But Ryland Ort sniffed this thing out from the beginning. He was upfield in position to make the tackle there. Uh, got a little block in the back. I think that was Connor Moore, the tackle that gets him here. You can see it coming. <laughs> on the outside, yeah, that was I think that in the in the spring, in the fall, and maybe any other time of year, uh, that one's going to be the same call. Yeah, they'll move it back. Good job by Ort coming up, uh, staying home, reading it well, and, and inserting himself into the play. Guy, you heard his name a lot last year, and you're going to hear it again this year a lot. As high snap hauled in there by Abshire, he'll take off. A designed run for the quarterback off left side. He'll get to the numbers before he's brought down after a gain of about one. McCade O'Reilly there along with some other Bobcats. But as you said, a little bit of a high snap. Got that one started off on the wrong foot. This blue offense is going the, the wrong way here. Yeah, one, two plays and gone backwards. I'm going to get a free play. Abshire launches one, and that pass was caught on the sideline. Great catch by Christian Anaya. Working against Balador. That was, uh, I thought he was going to be out of bounds. The ref didn't, wasn't, didn't look overly sure to begin with, but then he did signal the catch, and they are going to move the chains. That was a beautiful throw by Abshire. And, yeah, Boy, he, he does. He got a foot yeah, in. You could definitely see it. That's a great job by that receiver making another big play. We've heard Anaya's name a few times. Yeah, I would, I would say, you know, if you're looking at a, a guy that's really jumping off the screen at you, he is the guy so far this afternoon. And great shot by our camera guy in the corner down there as they hand this one off to Elliot, Elijah Elliot, the junior from Portland, Oregon. Ben Seymour coming down from that right defensive end again that time. Nice job of flowing with the ball, staying square along the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and a long nine, we'll call this, with Elliott in the backfield with Abshire. Abshire awaits the snap. It comes. He rolls to his left. He'll pass to his left, and it goes off the hands of the receiver, Alexander Jr., and it'll be a third down. Had him open, but just threw it Had out him open. of his good, reach. Good, shows good feet, kind of widening in that pocket on the little rollout. Had to throw across his body. Just a little bit off on the throw. I thought the DBs have played well today, too. They've made some tackles when they need to. And I've been impressed with the coverage on both sides, for, you know, not only with the ones, but the backups as well. Uh, I think it, it shows that depth that, you know, it used to be at Montana State. If you lost, uh, you graduated a corner. You were trying to figure out where that next guy was going to come from. But I think uh, you can see that depth today and, you know, moving uh, 
<coughs> excuse me, you move Drew Polidor back to safety from that corner spot, you know, that tells me that you're pretty confident in some of those younger guys coming up. A pass from Abshire went through Elliott's hands. Abshire's got an arm. He's, he's uh, not afraid to, to throw it with some gusto. See that defense is going to roll out and change the look for Abshire this time. They're going to check to a new play. We'll see if the defense then again adjust. Trips to the left, the ball in the near right hash mark. As Abshire in the blue, leading 14-7, moving left to right towards that sunny Holland end zone. That pass off the mark as well, and they're going to get a pass interference on that one. And yeah, they're going to. I think they're going to call a Louis Lecapa. The linebacker was in the underneath coverage that time. Looked in a pretty solid position. We were kind of, from our view up here, in a little bit of a trail angle, so couldn't see if the hands were there. We'll get, we'll get a, a better look, look, at, look at, it at it here as it comes right into your screen. Yeah, yeah, I think he was definitely there a little bit early. Had had a little wrap on that right, uh, right hip. Good job by our cameraman to pick that one up. So first and 10 inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. We're under seven to go here as Abshire keeps this one himself, and he's going to lose about a half a yard. That's Ort coming up again. I'll tell you, there's one thing about Rylan Ort. When he makes his mind up on what the read is, he is going a million miles an hour. That's why you see him making so many plays up along the line of scrimmage or even behind the line of scrimmage. I read that one perfectly, attacked it, and a great tackle for just a short loss on first down. So second. And about 11, we mentioned the guys running the squads, Willie Matt Garza for the blue, Sean Howell for uh, Justin Udy, Al Johnson, Sam Mix, the new running back coach, Jake Dusenberry, and Tommy Wilson, former Northern quarterback. As Abshire keeps this one in again and goes nowhere. Abshire with the run. Yeah, they tried to fool him that time on the in, and fake the, the inside zone play, and the Abshire pulled it out, but nobody fooled here on the outside. You can see Ort was upfield on his man again, set contain, and allowed the rest of the defense to just get there and swallow that one up. Big third down for the blue. That white coach by Taylor Housewright, Bobby Daly, Tyler Walker, no relation, Brian Shepard, Nicholas Jean-Baptiste, Marcus Monaco, and Kevin Sheehan. Abshire fakes the sweep and hand takes it off up the middle himself. Abshire It'll be very close to the first down mark, and they're going to give it to him. So first and goal. Good read there by Abshire. First down and goal. Good read and a good block at the second level that time. I think it was uh, 68. A Benjamin that, that got the tackle at on the backer. I think it was a, a Louis Lecapa that he peeled off that one and gave him enough room to go pick up the first down. Omar, a better one from Katy, Texas, sophomore. So first and goal for the blue, already up by 14-7 score and looking for more. And this one off to Johnson, and he'll skip and be brought down. No gain. Marky Johnson with a run. Hits the pile Blake Heal was the first one there for the Montana State defense and then got some help, but really well defended all on the that whole right side of the, the defense was up along the line of scrimmage and squared up, able to get out their block and make some plays. And you brought up Eli Abbey earlier, the kid out of Laurel. His sister just signed to go, I think, to Boise State to play basketball. So <laughs> a little bit of athletic talent <laughs> from that family as well. Knew his dad, a fine athlete. Abshire's got a... Look, he tried to go across the middle to the tight end, and he had Johnson open off the right side. Kind of that scoring play that Kuhn scored on for the white, but elected to go across the middle. It's incomplete. The third and eight here now. On to the state defense, going to save, save, stay with that same package. Going to be looking at trips. Single back. Abshire with Johnson. Blake Heal was the first one there for the Montana State defense and then got some help, but really well defended all on the, 
that whole right side of the, the defense was up along the line of scrimmage and squared up, able to get off their block and make some plays. And you brought up Eli Abbey earlier, the kid out of Laurel. His sister just signed to go, I think, to Boise State to play basketball. So <laughs> A little bit of athletic talent <laughs> from that family as well. Knew his dad, a fine athlete. Abshire's got a look. He tried to go across the middle to the tight end, and he had Johnson open off the right side. Kind of that scoring play that Kuhn scored on for the white, but elected to go across the middle. It's incomplete. The third and eight here now. Want to say defense going to say, say, stay with that same package? Going to be looking at trips. Single back. Abshire with Johnson off his left hip. He'll take the snap. The pressure comes. And that ball's tipped up in the air, and it'll fall incomplete. He, uh, Abshire saw the defense coming right up the middle, and he had to get rid of it. They brought, brought pressure from the free safety that time was Drew Powdor, number two. But you'll see he comes hard, and as you said, recognizes the pressure. Ului Lakepa was coming up field, and he just uh, got looked like he hit Marky right in the hat, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. So we'll see Stillwell, one of the transfers that comes in. Or not Stillwell, I'm sorry. Sandstead from uh, Minnesota. And his field goal attempt is good from about, uh, what, 18, 19 yards. So it's 17-7. And let's send it back down to our man on the sidelines, the great D.J. Bauer. Well, as you guys have been navigating the challenge today of figuring out who's wearing what jersey for this spring game, there's one jersey number that no Bobcat will forget. That is number 41. This year it has been awarded to linebacker Nolan Askelson from Billings. It's always awarded to a senior born in Montana every year since 2018, and it's got some significance, not only because Montana was the 41st state to enter the union, but it also honors the players from the 1941 football team, many of whom fought and died in World War II. 14 in total known as the Golden Ghosts and that number 41 a strong reminder preserving the legacy of some of those cats legends Usually you have the number retired outright instead Montana State decides it's better to live and breathe in that number and do this tradition They've been doing every year since 2018 Thanks DJ. Yeah, that number 41 very important in Bobcat history and you go back to that squad We saw the names up there. There was 33 on the roster that year in 1941 and 14 never came home yeah just uh, i think an outstanding tradition here at montana state a recent tradition to recognize those those gentlemen that gave the ultimate sacrifice for the 40 41st state in the union and another great selection uh in noel askinson a guy that has has battled a whole lot of adversity when it's come to injuries and whatnot and i think personifies that number and uh, very happy for him to be bestowed. What a great honor. We're on the sweep off. Uh, Garrett Walkie with the carry. He's a transfer in from Utah State. So was that a was that a fair trade? Trading Danny Sprinkle to Utah State for Walke? Uh, <laughs> that one's going to be up for debate as well. I think uh, you're going to have a lot of people here that uh, wear the blue and gold that are uh, that are awful proud of Danny Sprinkle and the job that he did as a player here at Montana State and certainly the job that he did in his short stint as a coach here but uh, we'll see you know it, we got time you know he's gone now right yeah how quickly you forget he's gone Logie in and that pass incomplete from Wilson it'll bring up a fourth down maybe a third down yeah I think they're gonna go to third down they're gonna We'll go ahead and oh you're gonna swap ends no punt again uh, clearly one of those uh, it is the spring right yeah it is so we're gonna see it is gonna be there won't be a punt it'll go over to looks like the blue offense the white d which is the uh, the 
number one D, if you would, at this point. Uh, a lot of different pieces out there. You look at uh, a young Neil Daly, number 14, a kid out of Billings West, Missoula. Prior to that, out there with the ones, uh, he's a kid that I had the pleasure of coaching. as just a young lad as a fifth and sixth grader, so uh, does my heart good to see that, uh, that young man uh, getting some reps with the big boys now. And Malazzo, and this is what I like about scrimmages now. You're not seeing just a play or two. It's not the NFL preseason where you see a series or two from the starters. As Malat fakes the handoff to Johnson, now he's going to take, uh, take it himself. And he'll be brought down behind the line of scrimmage as Brody Greeby a little slow to get up. But... Yeah, you want James Fitzgerald. You hate to see this. This is, you know, the absolute worst thing that can happen, uh, particularly at this point. You're two minutes and 45 seconds away from getting out of this clean. He stands up. He's just, but the, yeah, he's, that's a great that, sign. That, that is a, a great, <laughs> uh, your heart skips a beat if you're a Montana State fan when you see a guy that is that valuable to this squad. And then you see him now. He will get up and walk and, and is able to run off the field. So we'll hope that that's just a minor little momentary ding he got some time to heal now yep, yep. but i can guarantee you we will not see him again in, no. the, in the next 244 no you will not 17-7 the blue leading the white and malat still in the quarterback with johnson a couple of receivers split out wide to the right anaya and alexander jr second down and nine and Malott awaits the snap. We all await the snap. Fakes the handoff, trying to get around the outside corner. He does, and there's that speed of Tommy Malott as he'll scamper. Well, they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 35, so only a gain of a couple instead of yeah, the first down. Yeah, I think that's down. another situation where they're, they're just blowing him dead where uh, there could potentially be contact. See, as you said, great burst to the outside. Good block on the outside. Kenneth Iden is there to run him out of bounds. They're under two to play here. Third and five for the blue squad. Malat will send a receiver in motion. Now he'll pass back. That pass is caught. That was the guy in motion, Tavian Williams, the senior from... Washington, Maple Valley gives the blue the first down at midfield. Boy, that was a tight window, and that ball was thrown on a rope. Perfect pass. Clock continues to run as we're under 90 seconds left in the quarter. Trying to get the play called in here. You know, I've seen a lot of scrimmages, and this is the one <laughs> in all my life that has looked more like an actual game instead of a scrimmage. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, obviously uh, Coach Choate, when he was here, did had a different emphasis on spring ball, and, and we, would, we would do these games, and they wouldn't do nearly as much. I think in these three springs now that Coach Vegan has had, it is a far more competitive situation. He takes a far more aggressive approach to it, and he talked about it this week that, you know, this is – You've got a real situation. You're playing in front of some people. You've got uh, the down and distance, uh, time and score, and it's a great opportunity to really evaluate these guys, and we've seen some guys really step up to this situation today. A lot fakes the handoff on the sweep, and then he'll be sacked in the backfield by Blake Schmidt. We've had Bl Schmidt's name called a couple of times, the junior out of San Diego. But what I like about the scrimmage, you know, the way Coach Vegan runs it too, is it gives the younger guys the opportunity in game situations that you can't replicate in a practice. Yeah, without a doubt. They, they get to see, you know, it's it's real football. And he mentioned at uh, in the interview earlier with DJ that, you know, a lot of these guys – they haven't had they've been seeing a lot of practice time but they're not getting a lot of what would be called like game reps so to try and replicate that today uh, and get them some chances to 
to get back in that groove. Oh, what a great move by Johnson. And Johnson's got room to run, just needs one block. Look at Malott downfield trying to get there to help block. <laughs> this is, and I, are you allowed to block in the yellow jersey? I, I mean, we got to get a clarification on, you can't be on, tugged, on can what you the uh, the restrictions are there. But hey, this is, I, Tommy Lott, this is epitomizes this guy. This is a great, great run by Marquis Johnson. But look at four. He'll come into your... He's you know, it could be your picture here. He is trailing trailing the play and he is looking for oh, wow. someone to block. I remember reminds me two years ago in the spring scrimmage, Tommy Mallott threw an interception. They were on about the thirty going in, and he made the tackle at the five uh for the, the D B coming out. There, there there's just a no shortage of effort. He plays at one speed. And uh, it's you can see it's contributed <laughs> some unbelievable success for number four. A pass incomplete for Anaya, who may have slipped there in the end zone, but that was oh, it was either going to be caught by Anaya or it was going to be an incompletion. Another smart decision by a Bobcat quarterback. They're not. Uh, they got a, a sizable lead here, but they they're not taking the foot off the gas no, here aren't. in the closing seconds. I think number four wants to get him in the end zone again. I think he does. I think he'd like to get in the end zone. He's had a couple that blown dead. He'll get that one off to Inea, who's brought down inside the 10 at the 5. And a timeout's going to get called. <laughs> yeah, you, they, def, they definitely want two seconds left, Mike, and you, they definitely want that You call the timeout up 18-7 in the fall, and you're going to have some bad blood. But oh, it looks, gonna, like, gonna it looks like they're going to wave it up and, <laughs> and bring them across. But, yeah, that was an aggressive finish for a spring football game, the Sonny Holland Classic. And it was another classic as the teams come together. We'll take a break. We'll come back, wrap things up. Final thoughts when we return here to Bozeman. When it comes to car repair, would you really trust a hairstylist to get the job done right? Does anybody have a wrench so 